It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, December 6th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is thinking, it it just goes to show you sometimes you win these games and sometimes you don't. Yeah, I mean, the coach was happier in a loss than he was in a win. It's very interesting. All right, we are going to get to that game against the Avs, plus it's Phantoms Tuesday all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LockdownFlyers. That's where you'll keep up to date on our episodes and all that good stuff. You can also email the show at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. We've got a mailbag on tomorrow's show, so get those questions in Uh, Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube. So subscribe there as well. Russ, uh, going into this game, I I had like mixed feelings about the changes. I was glad to see Tanner Lazinski back Mm -hmm. in the lineup and that you know, did bode well, as it turns out in the game. Uh, I thought taking Max Wellman out was the right move in order to get Tanner back in the game. Uh, I I did appreciate Torts's, you know, mixed emotions about not getting Zamula back, but he really thought, I guess, against the abs, he had to keep the D core the same as it was for the Devils game, which I respect to some degree. I just want (laughs) Zamula back in the line. No, but I mean, yeah, it's hard after they did right. play a good defensive game. Yeah. To all of a sudden juggle that. So I, I do get it. Um, yeah. But, you know, the reason I had said what I said at the beginning is John was mad post game because, A, he knew he was playing an Avalanche team that is more injured than the Flyers. And I do want to point that out because Flyers fans don't seem to want to hear it because they have their own injuries. But it's like, hold on. This team is got like six or seven players from the cup team. That's it. And then they lost McKinnon. Like that's all they have from the whole team. So you have to look at it that way. But it was an eminently winnable game, and they did. But what he didn't like was at the end where Colorado was coming back. And, you know, there was kind of like that feeling in the building. There was another two minutes. Bad things could have happened. So that's what he didn't like. And he didn't like the fact that it was veterans – uh, making mistakes late in games. And, right. And I, one of them was Kevin Hayes. And yeah. he, so, so for all the points, and he's got 27 points, everybody could boast that he has 27 points, and that is great. But there's a whole half of a game that he doesn't play. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point. And I think that, you know, a lot of us, and me included, watching that game just got that not in our stomachs at the end because you're like oh god they're doing the turtling thing and it's getting scrambly and this can only lead to bad things and i I think we have that history right so we just assume things are going to go wrong and then they kind of did and you know this time around they did score that empty net goal which sometimes eludes them so yeah it is kind of crazy because connect the I think it was Connecty, you know, Lawton shot one earlier. No, Lawton shot right. the second one. Connecty did yeah. shoot one earlier that he missed. And you're right. Somehow that, that empty net does elude them. But again, there is this thought, and I've swung to this. Wayne Gretzky said he never would shoot for the empty net. He would just get the puck as deep as he could in their zone and leave it there. And, you know, there is something to that. Because every time you do shoot at the empty net and you miss – the puck comes back in your end. Exactly. And it's a finish. So, you know, Gretzky may have a point there. Yeah, I think, you know, in this game, faceoffs were pretty even between yeah. the two teams. Again, because the Avs were missing a lot of their top guys. But I, I think maybe they just had a little bit more confidence in their faceoff ability in this one, which sounds odd given how they've played no, this year think, on that. But I think that's I think it, accurate. You know, yeah. So, you know, maybe you want to take that shot. 
Yeah, a few things that we said did come true. Um, Alex Newhook did have a hell of a game. Listen, the whole game, I was like, why did I bring up Alex Newhook? He had a hell of a game. It was maybe, maybe the best game I'd seen him play as a pro. I know. So, I know. It was really good. But, the, you know, there was two things that were really good for the Flyers. The um, the Lisinski goal was good because Farabee um, used his, like, hockey IQ to get behind the defense, got the puck. Now, he ran out of real estate, so he just shot it. And Lisinski was good on Lisinski to come in full speed and look for a rebound. That's what you have to do a lot of times because, you know, you don't know that the goalie's going to glove it. And it went right on his stick and he put it right in the net. That was a big goal because even Jared Bednar said post game that kind of hurt because they played a good first period and the Flyers played a good first period. So that was mm-hmm. that was a really big one. And then, you know, Owen Tippett did finally get a goal. Uh, and you could see after that, he his play was different. Like it did help totally to loose, him. right? Yes. Yeah, he was just playing a lot more loose and a lot yes. more, I think, free. So and... you would think that would help him now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, especially because it was a power play goal, right? The Flyers got two power play goals in this game, which was hugely important yeah. for their power play overall. And you know, a couple of things that we said on yesterday's show is Tony D'Angelo needed to shoot more and he and shot. Owen and Owen Tippett needed to be more engaged. And yeah. lo and behold, <laughs> it that gets them a win, right? It, it did. Um, what almost wouldn't have gotten them a win, though, were all the penalties. Like right. it was just too many penalties. And it's just bad times, sometimes lazy, just you know, you just looked at some of those penalties and you were like, wow, I think they had the first two out of the gate. They maybe had like five for the game, something like that. And that's the league's best power play. You don't want to do that. So that's something where, you know, that's they They do have to clean that up. But again, when they win a game like this, I do point out that they have guys that are capable of scoring. And that's why sometimes I'm harder on them because I'm not going to just say, well, you know, they're not supposed to be good. Anyhow, they're not a good team, but there's players that they're paying that can score. And the ones that did it were a lot of the ones that, you know, we talked about Lisinski is, you know, an added bonus. All that said, yeah, I get coaches frustration a little bit because again, I'm going to just say not all this team has bought into his, his system. It's, it's obvious. And he has an issue with it. And who, whatever players he doesn't want to single out that we think we know who they are have an issue with it too. So we'll see how that, you know, goes down the road because that's an issue. Yeah, I do want to go back to the PK a little bit because mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. They took too many penalties and you can't do it, especially against a team like this. And, you know, Torch said as much after the game, but he also complimented the penalty kill, which, Mm -hmm. you know, we're up to the challenge and to only allow one for five in this game, I thought was really good, which is what I think was partially frustrating about how they turtled at the end because the penalty kill had been pretty effective over the course of the game and they couldn't figure out how to translate it to the barrage at the end of the game, which they in theory should have been able to do. But that's where this team, I just think, needs a little something extra in terms of closing out wins. And this is why Torts probably like the Devils game better in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because there was just, I I think the mistakes were, I think, a lot more obvious and more fixable, I think, than the immediate mistakes they made in the Devils game. Right. Right. The well, and, and a lot of it with the Devils was Carter Hart, and you know that's going to happen occasionally. And then Carter Hart was tremendous in this one. Yeah. Uh, even Torts said you can't really be a good goaltender with a team playing like this, and he's right. Like that's the one thing we have pointed out on this show many times is that he is under constant duress, having to make point blank saves. There's too many guys in the crease, and again, this is their defense. Like this will be their defense next year too. Maybe they get one other guy. So they all have to figure it out or there's going to be trades made or whatever. So it's not like we're saying, well, you know, when this guy comes back, no, there's nobody coming back. Ryan Ellis, I don't know if he'll ever come back. I think we're at the point now where we probably have pushed Ryan Ellis off to the side and said, we hope you're better in life, but I don't know if he's ever playing hockey again. So, you know, you can't look for anything else. Like this is the group. This is it unless changes are made. And so they just have to be better in front of that goalie. 
Well, there are some potential future flyers that maybe want to spot yep. on this team eventually, and we're going to talk about them on Phantoms Tuesday coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package theft spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Simply Safe's advanced technology is what I love the most. I can control the system from my phone with the app and even watch an HD live stream from the security cameras or monitor the wide array of high tech sensors in every room. In an emergency, 24 seven professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from simply safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system i recommend get 50 percent off any new simply safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on nhl today that's their biggest discount of the year so don't wait that's simplysafe.com slash locked on nhl there's no safe like simply safe check out the locked on sports today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide locked on sports today available wherever you get your podcasts russ the lehigh valley phantoms had a bit of a challenging weekend yeah. looking at it and you know maybe the results weren't there entirely in the games but I think that they made some significant progress in a couple of areas which we'll get into um, some good news Adam Brooks was back in the lineup back from injury wound up scoring in both games in Charlotte so that was nice to see for him yeah, he's always a good spark plug. He's a good skater. He's a good all-around player. He's had NHL experience. So that's that's you know, that's the kind of guy they didn't really have there last year, or not many of them. So it's nice to see him back. Yeah. And uh Artem Anisimov did not travel with the team for the weekend, obviously, because his situation was in flux. They were waiting on Bellows if he was gonna clear waivers and he didn't. And so um, we still kind of have a question mark there with what's going to happen with Anisimov's future. Uh, the, the I do phantom... want to point out one more time because, you know, it was definitely not a guarantee, not even close, that someone was going to pick up Bellows just because of the time of the year or whatever, all that. Right. We don't know how much longer Anisimov will hang around. If another team, you know, has an injury and needs a player, they can grab him tomorrow if they have, you know, room on the contract. So worthy of pointing out. Yes, definitely. So over the weekend, uh, they played Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, which I think is important to point out just because the Saturday game, which we'll get to, like wasn't the third game in three days. It was just right. a second half of a back-to-back, -back, which, you know, it, it sounds like it's still playing tired, but th that's what the AHL is, right? It's yes. a lot of playing tired. So we should talk about it in that context. But they lost Wednesday versus Hershey 4-2, to two, although there was an empty net at the end. Uh, Friday, they won at Charlotte, which it is very difficult to win in that building going yep. on the road. They won 3-2. to two. It was a really fun game. And Saturday, they lost 6-4 to four also at Charlotte. Uh, another empty net goal there at the end. So the game was a little bit closer than the score would suggest but that saturday game was kind of bonkers we'll get into it yeah, yeah, yeah. as well but it didn't really change anything for the phantoms in the in the standings obviously we're just getting the one win over the weekend uh while in charlotte though we got to see some old friends including alex lyon jerry mayhew michael delzato and connor bonneman you, just, you know there's going to be more the list is going to yeah. continue to grow <laughs> during this regime that's all i can tell you be prepared yeah I think Jerry Mayhew was the one that got the best of the Phantoms over the weekend, but uh, it was still fun to see some of those guys again. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Why not? I've always loved Alex Lyon and appreciate Alex Lyon's his a good time guy. Like I, I watched yeah. him in college. I, I appreciate him and his feistiness and, and everything else. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. So kind of looking at the weekend overall and the key takeaways, I think one of the things that 
they've been working on a little bit is trying to get more depth scoring and getting like more just people on the score sheet. So they weren't more depending scoring. entirely. Where have I heard that? More yeah. Scoring. Well, but the thing is they have been scoring. They just want to spread it out a little bit. No, no, I that's get the it. difference. You know, I think that's the difference here. So it was good this weekend to see Jordy Bellreve get on the score sheet for the first time. Garrett Wilson had a nice goal. And of mm -hmm. course I just mentioned Adam Brooks scored yeah. in both weekend games at Charlotte. Uh, but at the same time, the prospects still have the top five spots in scoring on the team with Tyson Forster, Ali Lixel, Cam York, Elliot Denoye, and Roddy Adderd. And I think that's a good balance, like, because you want your prospects to be the most successful on the team and try to push themselves and push their way onto the flyers eventually. Right. But at the same time, in order to have a successful AHL team, you need that depth scoring, you need that AHL vet scoring, and then it just boosts the confidence of everybody. No, so I think true. that the fandoms are, while maybe not winning all of those games, they're at least, I think, making some progress in, ter in terms of having more solid lines, more systems together, and, and getting more people on the scoreboard. I mean, First thing that, you know, to point out is, you know, Lixel is, is scoring at a better clip than Forrester. He's played in fewer games, a decent amount. So that's something where it's like, okay. Um, but getting past that, these guys are showing better development than last year. And that's – development's number one, winning's number two. That's always right. the way it should be in the AHL. But the reason why I really want this team to make the playoffs is, A, who knows the next time the Flyers make the playoffs, and it does help young players when they get to play in those situations. And so, you know, that's why I'm pushing. That's why when I'm, when I see they're back in sixth, I'm like, uh, and then I see this list and I'm like, okay, that's good. There's some progress. So there's, you know, there's a fine line between the two. Yeah. And that, that's really what I'm getting at is that we really need those prospects to succeed and get the experience they need. They need to be on top lines. They need to be in key situations, but they need support and they need veterans to help them out to help that development process along. And I think, you know, this this year is just a 180 from last year on that front. I think yeah. that even when they aren't successful, that the Phantoms are doing the right things by their prospects. And, and I think that's a good sign. And, you know, we were very nervous about Lappy and the coaching staff and, and would they be able to handle it because last year was just so tragic in a lot of ways Yeah, that I, I feel like at least at this point in the season, I'm my confidence is it's not a hundred percent there, but it's, you know, it's a lot better than it was. Let's say. Yeah. Mine's better than last year. I I'm not endorsing the co coaching staff at this time. Right. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> where I'm at on that front on special teams. I, I think they are improving still. Uh, you know, they did allow a shorthanded goal. Uh, the, the power play is a lot better, although that Saturday game, like I said, it was kind of bonkers, like a lot of power play score goals were scored in that game by both teams yeah, yeah. Uh, but the even but the Phantoms being three for four on the power play in a game is a lot. That's, that's <laughs> so, good. I, I mean, yeah, well, I don't know yeah. remember the last time. So that's an yeah. improvement. Yeah. And then again, you know, that Saturday game, the Phantoms were only three for five on the penalty kill, but they were two for three on Wednesday against a very good Hershey team and three for three on Friday against that really good Charlotte team as well. So, you know, I, I think that there's, again, room for improvement, as always, but I feel like they're at least getting it together and the puck movement is staying consistent and the, the defensive side of things on the penalty kill is a little more consistent. So I'm feeling, uh, again, okay, but not great. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah I, I, I feel the same way. It's like there's some definite good things going on here. Uh, you know, when I see the lines, there's still some things I don't like. I mean, especially in the pairings. I still don't like Belpedio on the top pairing. I don't know why that's continuing. I I get that they're rotating all the defensemen, but honestly, mm -hmm. with someone like Connaughton, he shouldn't be playing this much. I mean, I would have him in a lesser rotation than some of the other younger guys like Hogberg. Um, you know, he's not developing playing one out of three games or, you know, as an average. I do like the beginning adder pairing. I sure. think that's good for both of them. And I think their styles complement each other really yes. well. 
So I, I hope to see more of that in the future. I, like you said, they are rotating people around, but I do like that pairing in particular. I mean, either put York, York with Adderd or Adderd with Yinning, that's fine, and Wiley mm -hmm. with York. Like that, those yeah. are all guys that could be with the Flyers, and, and that's fine. The rest, Connaught and Belpedio, just make them your bottom pairing. I mean, it's like if you want to play them more in certain games, that's fine, but they're not going to be with you long term. Exactly. All right. Well, we have a lot more about the Phantoms to talk about, and we will do that next. Russ, I want to talk about the goaltending real quickly because uh, Sam Arzen played all three games this week. Now, again, it was a Wednesday and then Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday. So it was just a back to back um, coming off of that Wednesday game. So he had one day of rest in between. But uh, I, is that a good thing for Sam Merson to be playing as many games as possible right I now? I mean, not, not in that window. Like, I get it. He was out with an injury, so they're trying to catch him up on games. I don't know if that's the right way to catch him up. Playing two of every three is fine. But, you know, let Nagel play once in a while. Like, that's, you know, let let Urson have some mental rest. Uh if they're just going to load him up with games for like the next three weeks. So he's at that level of number of games. I'm not sure that's the way to do it. Yeah. I think that they did it because all three games were against top teams in the league. Right. Mm -hmm. So playing Hershey, playing Charlotte, totally get it. But I hope this is the exception and not the rule. I think that in a regular sort of weekend, they really should be putting Pat Nagel in uh, for one of the three games. Yeah, because he faced a lot of shots. Mm -hmm. He did. In there was game. like, yeah, 34 or 35 shots in each of the three games. And I felt like he had like one bad goal in each of the games in Which is Charlotte. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so he played mostly well and, and made some really great saves. But there's definitely a couple he'd want back, I would surmise. Sure, but we see it at the NHL level. I try and tell everybody there's one goal every game at least that you're going to say, mm, he probably would want it back, but it's like it's the way it is. Uh, Kiefer Bellows made his debut for the Phantoms on Saturday. Uh, I thought he was good. Uh, he drew a penalty in the first period, um, and then you know he was left wide open in the OV spot once so there was a nice two-on-one with Jackson Cates in that game so I, I think that you know he's looking to find his place there and figure out what he needs to do but at the same time I think he got off to a good start yeah I mean if he, he needs to be physical and he needs to score if he does those two things he'll catch the attention of the big club if he plays really good away from the puck and he plays physical but doesn't score well, they got a bunch of those guys. It's not going to help them. Right. Right. So hopefully we'll get him in some more games and, and see if he can kind of take charge of any of them. And I think that'll be key. And it'll be interesting yeah. to see how like the other guys react too. Is Tyson Forster going to step up? Is yeah. Ali Lixel going to take a step up because Kiefer Bellows is there now? And like, to me, I'm just like happy the team is getting more good players, you know, for the AHL level. I think that it's, it's good for the team. That he's yeah, they're there adding well. more players. Um, we don't know how they're all going to fit in because it's not like they're mm -hmm. adding these players with the Phantoms in mind. These are players that are cast offs from the Flyers. So from the team concept of it, I don't know. So I think that, you know, while it does help the team, is it going to push other guys down or other guys going to step up? I think Jackson Cates is a guy that's going to want to really step up. Yes. Uh, given that Jackson plays a physical game, but has some moves every now and again, I think mm -hmm. that, you know, similar kind of role there. Right. So I, I think that he's going to have to play a little harder, had a goal and an assist on Saturday. Um, you know, really heads up play in, in that game. So I, I appreciate what he's trying to do out there. Again, I think he just needs some consistency with line mates, which we just talked about has kind of been a little bit of a struggle for, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing. Consistency. Uh, you know, I don't know. Again, rotating is fine, but start to rotate with just, you know, known entities being in certain spots. Don't change all the spots. That's what I'm yeah. saying. 
Yeah, and for Ali Lixel, um, the Charlotte announcers were all over him as a threat, which was nice to hear from the other side of the fence, right? Yeah, it would just be nice to hear them say it in Philly. Yeah, I know. That's what was so like it's just odd crazy. It. I mean, I, I have to just go off on a 20 second rant because Philly is a team looking for goals, looking for potential scoring. You've got this guy, but he's not going to score instantly when you bring him up. So, like, mm -hmm. you have to leave him for a while and then hope to get that scoring. Like, that's that's the part about the Flyers I don't get. But anyhow, it's a phantom show. So, continue. <laughs> Uh, on the defensive side of things, looking at Cam York, I think, you know, we talked last week about he just has to play a little bit more consistently yeah. in order to get that call up that he was doing all the right things. And I think he just needs to get on the board more. It, it feels like that they're just going to look at those numbers that he has to contribute in a much stronger way offensively. And this past week, you know, he only had two shots on goal and no points. And that's just not going to get you in front of no. management. And while he played well and he played well defensively, like that's just not, it, like, it's frustrating, but that's just not going to do it for this team defensively who seem pretty set on the flyers end and don't seem to be in a rush to bring him up. So if, if he, he wants scoring. to move up. True. He is scoring at a much better clip than last year, though. He's yes. got 12 and 19 instead of 12 and 34. His plus minus is better because the team's a little better and he's a little better defensively. You know, like I said, that 25 game mark might be right for him. I mean, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit more cleaning up. And, uh, you know, again, then you have to start asking when. So on, on Ronnie Adder's side, he is taking shots and he's contributing offensively uh, four shots on goal Wednesday two each on Friday and Saturday and had an assist in each of those games against Charlotte and so he's getting his name on the scoreboard I think more consistently than Cam York even though you know Cam York has more points overall at this point I think right. Ronnie Adderd is doing it in a more regular fashion but I don't think he's going to get the call up either again because of the same reasons we just talked about Yep, I agree. But other than that, um, Elliot Denoye is continuing to, you know, look like a real good goal scorer. He's, you know, his point total is 11, but it's nine goals and two assists. So he's definitely that goal scorer. He's not the playmaker no, of the no. forwards. So uh, you would expect it uh, to be that kind of a differential with him. And sure enough, there it is. And, you know, some flashy plays from him, some of which yeah, didn't end up in want. the net. That's what we expect, and that's yeah. what you want to, you know, cultivate. Yeah. So, I, you know, again, overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the weekend, despite the results. Um, I do want to see them move up in the standings, which is going to be hard for them. So they're just going to have to win against good teams. Uh, we do have a couple of games this week to look forward to, and that is Wednesday at Hartford. And then they have a rematch against Charlotte, but this time it's at home. So they have, right. you know, basically two weeks in a row playing back to back against Charlotte. And I, I just think they have to, now that they've seen Charlotte and know what to do against them, yeah, they, that's where this it's is where the they need staff. to be. Yeah. This is yeah. where they have to be successful. Yeah. You've got video uh, on them. You could definitely take advantage. You know, I think, I think all the young players are doing well. And I think all this other talent that they've added is what should be pushing them up the standings. And if it's not, then you don't have those right guys. And that's yeah. when you have to start considering even just moving them out in some deals and getting the right guys. Cause again, you still want these guys to develop and try and do as, as well as they can, but there could be a point where the development stops because you know, the veterans you have just aren't quite cutting it. Yeah. Uh, just one quick note before we sign off. A friend of the show, Tim, was at Charlotte for the game on Saturday and sent in a note saying that um, he really liked how physical the Phantoms were, but they took too many penalties and that they really just fizzled out at the end uh, mm -hmm. playing, you know, six on four. Mm -hmm. to try and get back into it, but just couldn't convert. And, you know, that, I kind of agree with him on that take based on watching the game on TV. But, yeah, thanks, Tim. And I uh, yeah, hope to get, get more Phantoms notes from you in the future. 
uh, wrapping up with our flyers fun thing, the Wednesday goal from Ali Lixel um, on a f- nice feed from Cooper Marodi. Yeah. Love that goal. So we're going to share that with you. That will do it for today's show. We will be back again tomorrow. We are going to preview our second matchup, I believe, of the season against the Washington Capitals. And uh, we'll have a mailbag for you as well. So get those questions in via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers, or you can email the show at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail. You can comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.